everybody, welcome to the Blood Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a game school video. All week long, we are focusing on a game school series where I am breaking down our top games off of our game school shelves by subject. Now, three years ago, I did something very similar, and you guys have been begging me to do it since. So if you were looking at these games when I start showing them and you're thinking, these look a little old for my guys, or my kids or my students or whoever you're looking at games for, then I'm gonna make sure I leave a link in the description box to the original series I did three years ago because those games would be from when Emily was a little bit younger, um, probably around the six to seven age is what I'm thinking and around kindergarten to first grade. Today's games that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys are our history and geography games. And there are a ton of them, so I'm just gonna get started. These are in absolutely no particular order other than what I happen to grab first. Um, which looks like it's going to be timeline. Now, for the sake of this video not being super long because I have quite a few games for this category since we're combining geography and history, I'm only going to show you the classic timeline. There are, however, two other versions of this. There is classic timeline, which is what this one is. There's timeline inventions and there's timeline events. We own all three of them. We equally enjoy all of them. If you're only gonna get one, classic would be the one I would get. But it's super simple gameplay. Basically, you have, I'm gonna throw the cards on the ground. Basically, you have all of these small cards with different events throughout history. And on one side, you have no year. And on the other side, you have a year. So you're dealt the cards and you look at them with no year. Now in front of you, you're gonna have two or three cards to start with. And then you start putting your cards based off of what's in front of you, where it would go in that timeline. You turn it over, if you're correct, then you don't have to do anything. And then basically whoever gets rid of all of their cards first wins. If you're not correct, you draw a new card and you try again. Super fun and it's a super great way for kids to start seeing the timeline and seeing where things fit because some of the things in there can be as simple as like wine was invented or cats were domesticated or shampoo was invented. Um, and then others are, you know, major historical events like the Gettysburg Address or, you know, World War One or two. So it's just a really great way to start kind of getting kids to think worldwide in a historical kind of big picture. Next, we have Simile, Similo History. Think Guess Who with historical figures. So if your kids like guessing games, it's really great because it is literally a Guess Who type of card game with historical figures like, um, let's see if I can remember who all is in here. Cleopatra, Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, it's got tons of fun historical characters that your kids will probably recognize. Again, for the sake of time of this video, I'm just gonna show you guys a brain box. We love this, the entire line, and we have a ton of them. This particular one is world history. They have world history, they have US history, they have US presidents, they have historical um, boxes, they have geographical boxes. I think there's one for countries. So there are a ton to choose from. It is super duper simple to play, and I love it because it draws a little bit on your thinking skills as well. So you essentially get a card and a timer and you get to study this card while the timer goes. As soon as the sand is gone, you roll the dice and whatever number you land on, you have to try to answer that question. So let's pretend you rolled number four. What has been painted? It was a cave painting on here. Um, but it can be like, when did the stone age end? Because there's little factoids on the card or is the man wearing any clothes? So you may have been studying the words, but were you also studying the pictures? But it's really cool because there's all these little facts on the cards as well. And it's 10 seconds that you get to study it before you have to try to answer one of those questions. So I really love that that weaves in history and geography as well as some of those like logic and memories and paying attention and trying to, you know, do that brain training, if you will. The Scrambled States of America, this is probably one of our top most played games in our homeschool. I will do a top five at the end like I've done on the other one so far. Um, it is one of my favorites, especially if you're starting off with US geography, because you don't have to know information going in. I find a lot of US um, geography based games expect you to already know the capital or know the state or know, you know, information about it. And you have to know nothing to play this game. 
probably being able to read would be helpful. But other than that, you don't have to know anything about the states and capitals and information about them going into it. And it is a super fun, fast paced game. And then these, I did pull all of them out just to show you quickly. These are trivia based games by Tactic. We really, really enjoy all of these. We have the States of America, which is for state flags, shapes, capitals, and landmarks. We have Wonders of the World, which is like amazing man-made structures. Our planet is full of all of these just amazing things. It's 200 cards, so 200 different Wonders of the World. Animals of the World and Flags of the World. And what I love most about these is it's trivia based, but you also have to actually sort the cards when you get them into the continent they belong on. So like the flags, the animals, the wonders, which continent you would find them on. Um, and you get extra points for being able to do that correctly. So it's trivia in one sense, but then you're also having to sort by continent in another. So it's like a twofold purpose game in my opinion. Okay, next up we have parks. Obviously we love the national parks and we love learning about the national parks. So this was great because you get to hike trails and visit national parks in the game. Um, it is a lot of fun and it's really, really well done. Like the pieces are really nice and you can even play that game with one player, which is a plus if you have an only child. Next, we have Passport to Cultures. This is the travel edition. It's a lot of fun because it actually feels like you're traveling. You get the little passport. Um, it's just kind of a lot of fun. And it's, again, a trivia-based game. You're going to find we really, really enjoy trivia in our house. Game of the States. Who can sell the most from coast to coast? Emily absolutely loves this game because it comes with these little bitty, your game pieces are these little bitty like trucks and they're so cute because it actually holds little tiny blocks in the back of them because that is what you're trying to do you're trying to sell different things from coast to coast and as you are selling those things from coast to coast and collecting your little blocks um, you're also learning extra information about the state, like what that state is known for, what they sell the most of, what's their import and exports. So it's a lot of fun and a different kind of take on a state's game that I found. Sorry, that was a little bit loud. Way back when in history, the making of America. I don't even know if you can find this game anymore, but if you can and you're doing American history, it is well worth it. I believe the only place I've seen it that it was still available was Rainbow Resources, but you are basically doing a trivia based game, but you are going through the American colonies, the explorers, the Civil War, the Constitution, and the American Revolution. So that's kind of where well, you start in the American Revolution, sorry. But that's where you go through that time period as the board game itself. Um, it's really, really good for American history. All right, next we have sequence states and capitals. We love the sequence games. I shared sequence numbers in the math games two days ago. It is a similar type of setup. Your card that you're going to pick up is going to be the capital and you're going to put your bingo chip on top of the state. Whoever person or team that gets five chips in a row is going to be the winner. So it's like kind of like bingo, but it's a lot more fun. Pandemic is a cooperative game and I love cooperative games, especially ones that are a little bit older now. And you're basically trying to prevent an outbreak or a pandemic um, from going worldwide, but you're going from country and continent and you're going all over the, the map, which is the board, which is like the world. So it's really, really fun cooperative game that sneaks in some geography. Continent race. Have fun while learning the continents, the countries of the world, and their flags. Um, it comes with a world map, the list of the continents, 250 country cards, and I have found that this is probably one of the best games for world geography for younger kids. It can be played from seven up, maybe even a little bit younger. Um, it comes with a ton of cards, so you could go through and just kind of take some out and do a little bit at a time, depending on you know how much you think your kids can handle. But it's good for seven up, at least two players, and it only plays in 30 minutes. So it's one of those few ones 
um, that younger kids can play because I find some geography and history games tend to be really, really long. And let's be honest, a six and a seven year old are not gonna play an hour long game. At least my daughter at six and seven was not gonna play an hour long game. Again, for the sake of this video, I'm only going to show one. This is Ticket to Ride First Journey. Um, we have all of the First Journeys, and we have some of the um, full ones like Nordic countries and Europe and all of those. Any of the Ticket to Rides are fantastic for geography because your board that you're playing on is a map. So this um, Ticket to Ride Journey is a map of the U.S. Obviously, Ticket to Ride Europe would be Europe. Nordic countries is Nordic countries. So depending on, like, if you're studying, let's say... Um, Asia in your homeschool, there's a ticket to ride that's Asian based. You could buy that one and you could really focus on just playing the game based off of whatever area that you're learning about. Ticket to ride is a great fun game no matter what. It's even great for game nights. It doesn't feel um, school like, but it kind of is stealthy in the school because of the board being a map. Great States. This is one where it has different types of trivia. So there's find, figure, fun, and fact. Um, it's a lot of fun, but I will say it is helpful if you know some about the states, unlike Scramble States of America, where you could go in knowing nothing. The more you know, kind of the better off you are for this game. But it is a lot of fun. It's trivia based and it's for seven plus. So younger kids can play it. And obviously the more you play, the more they would learn. So then the easier it would be for them. I'm gonna show you both of these just because they were on the shelf next to each other, but it's basically the Explore the World and Explore the 50 States. It's exactly the same game trivia-wise, trivia except one is US and one is the world, and you get trivia cards based off of um, flags, time period, like history, travel, or you can choose. And then there's some fun, funny things that you get to do in there as well. I find these to probably be the most well-rounded because there is some history and geography in, in them both. Um, it's a seven plus game, two to six players, plays in about 30 minutes as well. So your younger kids could play that too and then learn as they go. And then I have the Geography Trivia Challenge. This one kind of surprised me how much I enjoyed it. I know we like trivia games, but we really, really fell in love with this one. And you have three different categories of trivia that you're answering and it's a name it, which is like a picture and it tells you like, do you know what this place is basically? A know it, which is just a random trivia question and a rank it, which the ranking ones are so much fun. Um, and so for example, the one on the back is an advanced because there's beginner and advanced, which makes it easier. You can have some people doing the beginner side of the cards, some people doing the advanced side of the cards, so you can play on different levels at the same time. Um, but it says rank these European rivers by length, longest to shortest, Volga, Rhine, and Danube. And again, I just, that just is interesting to me because out of all of the trivia games that we've played, that is the only company I've ever had where they're like, rank these things. And it really makes you think a little more outside of the box. And so we really enjoy that. The last few games that I have to show you are from Underdog Games, which are one of my favorite companies. I'm going to tell you right now, they're a little bit pricier when it comes to games, but they're absolutely worth it because the pieces, the quality, the workmanship, like you even the boxes, like I can't even explain it. They're heavy, so I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to hold them up, but um, this is their a brand new one that just released called Her Story. It is about historical women. It is so much fun. And as a mom of a girl, I knew I had to add this to our collection because I am a huge proponent of teaching Emily about famous women that came before her in history. Um, and she was so excited because one of the first cards that she got to play was Bessie Coleman. And we did the huge aviation unit study two years ago, I think. And Bessie Coleman and Amelia Earhart are like some of her heroes. Anyway, and it's a great game if you are looking for some women's history. This one is for eight plus, um, and it plays in 30 to 60 minutes, two to five players. It is one of the few games that they have that has a lower age range. Most of their games are 10 plus. So this one you can get away with a little bit younger than that. Another one of theirs is Trekking Through History. So this is really fun because you are playing over a couple of different days and each days um, that you're trekking, you're going a little bit further back in time. And it's two to four players, ages 10 plus and 30 to 60 minutes. Here, I'll let you 
get a better look at that. But like I said, just the pieces of the games themselves, like the quality of it. Here's the back of her story because I didn't show you guys. The quality of the pieces are just, they blow me away. They really do. Um, and then we have Trekking the World. Again, ages 10 plus, two to five players, 30 to 60 minutes. This is a great game for a little bit older kids. Like I would say it's definitely a nine to 10, like it says, because it's a longer gameplay, but it is so beautiful. Everything is so nice to handle and it plays very well. And then last is their trekking the parks because obviously we love national parks. So we had to own this one and that is what that game looks like. All right. So now we're just down to the small games that I keep in these containers. Um, the first one I have for you is Top Trumps. Now this is Top Trumps National Parks. Top Trumps is a fantastic game where you're basically playing a war based off of different categories. There's always um, fun facts on the cards that you're playing. Now they have a ton of different topics. Like I said, this happens to be national parks, but there's a ton of different geography and history based topics. So if you are learning something in your homeschool, like I literally search when I'm searching top Trump's sharks, top Trump's Greek mythology, like whatever unit study we're doing, just search it with top Trump's and see what you find. But that's fun for geography. Um, another one similar to the top trunks, top Trump's is Professor Noggin. We love the Professor Noggin. This happens to be ancient history. Um, you basically roll a dice and answer the questions which are easy or hard on the back. You can play either one. We always try to start off with the easy and then by the end of our unit study, we aim to be able to answer the hard. We love Top Trumps. We pay Top Trumps and Professor Noggins. We play them both all the time. It is another one I search. I think I now own all of them, but before I would literally search Professor Noggin space, Professor Noggin, whatever we were gonna learn about. Um, here is the Professor Noggin country one. So they also have one for geography as well. And again, easy and hard questions on the back. The gameplay is the same for all of them, which I love. I've told you guys before, sometimes it's difficult to try to remember how to play all the games. So when I find a game that I like, that I know how to play, that's easy to remember how to play, and then they have tons of different topics, I'm all over it because then I only have to remember one type of gameplay and we just play the different topics or the different skills. So I really, really like that. This is Quick Picks Geography, which I showed you a Quick Picks money in the math video that we just did. So this is similar. It's a quick paced game with geography. So here, the cards that you would have laying out for everybody would be cards like this that would be like the country or the continent area that it's based off of. And then you would have these cards in your hand and you would be the first to say Finland is in Europe or whatever. I'm not sure what they actually say off the top of my head. Western or Eastern Europe. So you would have to pick or Scandinavia or South America. So it's a quick paced fun. And again, there are tons of different topics within quick picks. So it's one of those where once I learn how to play it, I don't have to learn how to play, you know, multiple different games. And then the last one, these can sometimes be found at the Dollar Tree. So definitely keep an eye out. This is Brain Buster. It's basically simple trivia. They have pictures on the front and they have six questions on the back of each card. Um, this one is the Brain Busters Geography, so it is geography based. They have a lot of different topics, space, human body, um, zoo animals. I don't remember all the other ones. I think we have about eight of them. They're relatively affordable on Amazon as well. And I like them because they're so affordable. It's a simple trivia that we can play in the car or throw in our morning basket and get a little bit of trivia in on whatever topic we're learning about that doesn't require us to have a table or a lot of things to do. And it's really affordable. So that is it. That is our top geography and history games off of our game shelf that we play the absolute most. I would love it if you would leave your top geography and history games in the comments because I'm always looking to add to our game shelves. So please don't let me down. And I've been sharing our top five from each game video because if you are on a budget and you just need to know what are your top ones, here they are. Um, in no particular order other than this first one, absolutely hand down. Number one is Scramble States of America. Um, 
like this is one if I lost it tomorrow I would definitely buy it again so that is number one after that these are in no particular order the geography trivia challenge we've really really been playing this one a lot lately um, the brand new her story I would pick all the underdog games but that would make me go over five so if I can only pick one it is this one currently let's see what are we up to that's three this would be at number four way back when the making of America the history game if I'm going to put one with that because I think it's out of print and you can't find it then it would be game of the states because that one includes a little bit of everything and then last but definitely not least I would have to say basically any of the ticket to rides so that would be my top five or six geography or history games that we play in our homeschool.